The strikes on the Dzenkoy Air Base and temporarily occupied Crimea were a joint operation of the armed forces of Ukraine and the Ukrainian defense intelligence. After the attack, two waves of detonation followed, the exact consequences of the defeats with the upgraded weapons are being clarified according to some Ukrainian sources, the attack on the airfield in Dzenkoy was inflicted by modernized Soviet weapons. This came as a surprise to the Russian occupiers, so the consequences and scale of the defeats, according to preliminary data, became significant. Sources note that with a high probability as a result of the strike, three air defense systems located on the territory of the Dzenkoy Air Base were destroyed. The invaders could also lose several helicopters, a fuel tank, an ammunition depot, two radar stations, one ew rec station and a bastion coastal missile launcher. Some shared images show the destroyed S-400 Triumph air defense system after a strike on the airfield. It is noted that three missile launchers and a radar were destroyed, a military equipment reception and repair point was hit, and 22 occupiers are considered missing. Ossin analysts showed what was at the airfield in Zankoy in March according to them, there were four Su-25 aircraft. 10 Mi-28 helicopters, and two Ka-52. Images dated March of this year also show the area with the S-400. Recall that the 39th Helicopter Regiment of the 27th Mixed Aviation Division of the 4th Air and Air Defense Command of the Southern Military District of the Russian Federation, three aviation squadrons on Mi-8, Mi-35M, Mi-28, Ka-52 are deployed at the military airbase near Zenkoy. Also, helicopters of the Border Service of the FSB of the Russian Federation are deployed there. Zelensky irritated by U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris' request not to hit Russian oil refineries. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky during the Munich Security Conference in February and urged him to refrain from striking Russian oil refineries. The Washington Post reported this, citing sources. The sources said that Harris's request irritated Zelensky and his aides. The sources noted that the Ukrainian president brushed off these recommendations because he was not sure that they reflected the consensus position of the Joe Biden administration. The newspaper adds that in the following weeks, Washington confirmed this warning in numerous conversations with the Ukrainian side. In particular, these statements were made by senior representatives of the Pentagon and U.S. intelligence, as well as by Jake Sullivan, U.S. national security advisor who visited Kiev in March. However, since then, Ukraine has struck a number of Russian facilities, including an attack on the 2nd of April on Taneko, Russia's third largest oil refinery located in Tatarstan. U.S. officials say that supporting global energy markets to reduce inflation is a priority for the Biden administration ahead of the presidential election. However, they said it is also important for maintaining European support for Ukraine's war effort. An increase in energy prices risks dampening European support for Ukraine aid, the U.S. official said. The U.S. also doubts the military benefits of these Ukrainian attacks. In particular, the U.S. military believes that the strikes do little to reduce Russia's combat capability and have led to a large-scale missile attack on Ukraine's power grid, which is much more damaging to Ukraine than the strikes on the refineries were to Russia. The newspaper notes that the U.S. position on strikes on Russian refineries has angered Ukraine, which considers such actions to be justified given Russia's continuous attacks on Ukrainian territory. Ukrainian officials believe that these attacks are necessary to raise the price of Russian aggression and to emphasize that Russian society will not be safe until the war unleashed by Russia ends. Earlier, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin recently criticized the Ukrainian strikes on Russian refineries, questioning their impact on the war. Meanwhile, Europe believes that Ukraine has the right to strike Russian refineries. Mine danger remains one of the main threats in the Black Sea, said Dmitro Plitinchuk, spokesman for the Ukrainian Navy. He also noted that mines are a common problem for Ukraine and its Black Sea neighbors. Among them are three NATO members, Romania, Bulgaria and Turkey, according to Front News Media outlet. We have a lot of such work to do, we do it every day to organize security for our export-import corridor. However, the Black Sea still needs a full-fledged demoning operation. It has already been planned, a headquarters has been established, and ship crews are preparing. However, now, due to the Montreux Convention, these ships cannot enter the Black Sea, Plitinchuk said according to Plitinchuk, the Ukrainian crews that were preparing to use the UK's Cherkasy and Chernihiv ships have already been trained. They are already on duty. Last year they received a first level of compatibility with NATO countries. This year, we hope to get the highest rating, the second level of compatibility. 
In addition, three more ships are being prepared for transfer from the Netherlands and Belgium. And these crews are already receiving training. In total, we plan to receive five mine-resistant ships, said Pletenchuk. The spokesman also described the situation in the Black and Azov Seas. The situation is currently stable, the missile carriers are at their basing point in Novorossiysk. Only a patrol yacht of the Russian Federal Security Service is in the Black Sea, not far from the coast. There is no other activity in the Black Sea. One of the cruise missile carriers, which is being tested in Russia, has left the Azov and Black Seas and is returning to the plant for completion, Pletenchuk said.